Good morning, YouTubians. Here it's Chemist Ghost dealing with the M's today at the collection. It's quite a few. It's probably over 200, so we'll go through these as quick as possible. Macbeth. This one and Richard III, probably my favourite of the uh, the Shakespeare stories. Um, Michael Fassbender. Great film. Uh, Machine Gun Preacher. This is Gerard Butler. Like a reformed character. Maggie's Plan. Not seen that one yet. M. Oh, this is a story of uh, a child murderer and his pursuit. And quite the film. I recommend this one. Uh, you get a DVD, second DVD, Blu-ray, and a book. This is a quite a comprehensive book. And this is a Eureka Masters of Cinema release. Uh, MacGruber. I think this was a TV show. I'm not sure. I've not seen this one yet. Uh, yeah, I think that was based on like a TV show, like a black comedy kind of thing. Uh, the Machine. Machinist. This is quite a harrowing watch. My God, what he did to his body, Christian Bell. Lost like, like oh, I don't know, three quarters of his weight or something. He was just a, like a walking skeleton. It's quite a hard watch, but a good film. Mad Max Trilogy. This is uh, Mad Max. Then you got Road Warrior and Beyond the Thunderdome. Pretty decent movies. Mel Gibson. And then you have... Uh, the Tom Hardy Mad Max version. You got Charlie still on in this with like a CGI'd hand missing. Um, Nicholas Holt, the bald head. Quite a basic story, really. It's like a road movie. It goes Fury Road. Uh, they go on a journey and then turn around and come back pretty much well. It's like a, a chase, more of a journey. <laughs> Something loose in there. A little bit of plastic. Will you look at that? Um, now it's on the floor. Maggie, yes, uh, a zombie film of sorts with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Abigail Breslin. Quite a slow burn. Don't go in thinking it's going to be World War Z. Magic in the Moonlight. This is a uh, this is a Woody Allen film, and it's about a guy who's sort of out to disprove an American, so say, magician. It's like a woman who's um, having influences on rich men. Just put it like that. Magic Bell Island. This is this is available in America. Um, I think it's region locked though. Had to get some Germany. It's Morgan Freeman, Virginia Madsen. It's about a um, wheelchair bound uh, writer that goes for inspiration to this like little villagey place and strikes up friendship and gets his inspiration back. Magic Mike and Magic Mike Two. Magnificent Seven. Great movie. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Your Brenner, Charles uh, Bonson's in this, James Coburn, amongst others. Great Western. And then you had the remake. The remake is uh, really enjoyed the remake. It's on TV a few months ago. It's one of those films that you start watching, you, you have to watch. It's, it's just great. And you've got Denzel Washington, Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke. You've got Skarsgård, and there's Peter Skarsgård. I think he's a villain, if I remember rightly. Good film, very good film. Magnolia, not my favourite of uh, Tom Cruise films. This is one of those sort of uh, interlocking stories thing that they said did a lot of in, a, in at one time in Hollywood. Um, a lot of small stories and they all overlap. You've got um, John C. Riley in this, Alfred Molina, Julianne Moore, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Tom Cruise plays a jerk in that. Uh, Magnum Force, great film. And this is this was sort of off the back of Starsky and Hutch, if I remember rightly. Uh, and David Soul, who was in both, and he was a goodie in Starsky and Hutch. Plays a dirty cop in this one. Great film. Major League, yes, this is uh, Charlie Sheen being Charlie Sheen. Um, about a bunch of misfits uh, baseball players. Classic. Majestic, Jim Carrey, and I'm pretty sure it's been a long time since I've seen this. He comes home from uh, some kind of war conflict, and could be World War Two. I'm not, not entirely sure. And uh, he opens up a cinema, local cinema. That's a German release. I don't think I got a UK release even to this day. Might do, might have done though. Miami Rhapsody. This was a part of an exchange thing trade did, we did with uh, Movie Edge. Go and check his channel out, Movie Edge. 
Made in Manhattan. I love a rom-com, and this is probably one of the better ones. Jennifer Lopez, uh, Ralph Fiennes, aka Voldemort, and uh, it's a story. It's a Cinderella story. Very, very good. Malcolm X. It's about the um, inspirational, motivational speaker for um, black rights, and great film. Denzel Washington is in this. Um, Angela Bassett. Anybody else? Uh, Delroy Lindo, like him, Spike Lee directed this, so it's a really good film. Very good movie. Maleficent. They're re not remaking it, they're doing a, a sequel to this, and uh, it looks pretty good. And I like this one. You've got um, uh, Sholto Kopi, uh, the guy who was in that trilogy, uh, District 9, Chappie, and Elysium. He's in this, plays good character. Uh, you got Mila Staunton and um, Eddie Fanning. Very, very good film. 3D is very good in that as well. Maltese Falcon. What can you say about this? Um, great film. Humphrey Bogart. This is the, the origin of the word MacGuffin, if I remember rightly. Um, number 47, 1941, of uh, the H&B Classics, uh, the, the premium collection thing they do and mama mama uh, jessica chastain look at that picture mm. okay next pile mama mia if you love abba you're gonna uh, even if you just like abba you're gonna love this um great cast mel street pierce Brosnan, colin first dan skarsgård julie walters dominic cooper amanda siegfried and um christina Brown. Bonansky, the, uh, she plays Leonard's mum in Big Bang Theory. None of the men can sing in this to save their lives, and uh, Judy Waters can't sing really. So, but the others, the um, Amanda Seyfried, um, Meryl Streep, obviously, overrated actress, going to Trump, and um, Christina uh, Baranski, she can sing. Good story, it's like a rom, not really a rom com. It's more like just a rom. One musical, very, very good. And then you had the sequel. Haven't seen this yet. I need to see this. Uh, when this was at the cinema, I was, I went and saw Terminator 2 in 3D. And it was, I wish I'd seen that because that Terminator 2 in 3D was, I was, it was, the heating was on. It was like 90, 90 degrees in it, it sweltering. Uh, Man about the house. Uh, this was a TV show, British TV show. Don't know what came first, TV show or the film. Um, just great English humour. And these two, I don't know if you can see them. You've got Euford Joyce and the bottom and Brian Murphy above. They went on and had their own TV show, um, Georgia Mildred. Manchester by the Sea, Casey Affleck. I really like Casey Affleck. Good actor. Uh, and Curian Candidate. I've seen this one. Didn't, I haven't seen the original. I need to get the original and see that one. Um, who's in the original? Is it... Uh, Cosby? No, I can't remember who was the original one. Oh, that's going to bug me now. Anyway, good film. Uh, story of manipulation. You've got Denzel Washington, Lee Schreiber, who's being manipulated, and Mel Streep. Very, very good film. I haven't seen that for a long time. Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, Idris Elba. Idris Elba's just a good actor. Man Down with uh, Shia LaBeouf. Who else is in this? Um, Gary Oldman, that's the one. Mandy, uh, a story of uh, revenge again, and this is um, this is mad Nicolas Cage, but you can understand why. His wife, is it his wife and daughter, or just his wife gets. Uh, don't think it says. I might have given a bit of a spoiler away there. Man from Uncle, uh, yeah, it's very very slow, very very slow and dry and not much really happens in this but i do like it it's a good it's it's a good film harry cavell uh superman um army hammer from social network who played the twins this is vikander tomb raider and lots of other things good cast hugh grant's in this as well good cast good story just don't expect like the tv show sort of thing it's slow burn but good manhattan Mel Street, Woody Allen, Diane Keaton, directed by Woody Allen, I believe. Pretty sure it was. 
pretty sure it was. Man of Steel. This is a good movie. Uh, I like origin stories. Uh, I mean, how I many times can we have the origin stories of Superman? No, I don't know. And same with Batman, really. But good film. 3D is really good in that. And um, as a conspiracy theorist um, <laughs> of sorts, Kevin Costner played his dad in this, the one who found him. Um, Russell Crowe played his biological father in this. And they both played Robin Hood. Coincidence? Um, Man on a Ledge. Very good film. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, it's a heist film. It's a, it's very good. And But there's sort of something else going on at the same time. Uh, the guy's on the ledge and he's like a distraction. Great cast in that. You've got uh, Sam Worthington, Elizabeth Banks, Jamie Bell. Jamie Bell's a really good actor. I think he's in the new... Uh, what's the name film? The um, Elton John film. Let's just pop the light on there because I think this might be there. This might be a bit better. Might make no difference at all. Um, Man on Fire: Story of Kidnap and Redemption. Man without face. Uh, Mel Gibson. Uh, Nick Stahl. What was he in? Nick Stahl's Terminator Three. Did he play John Connor in Terminator Three? I think he did. A uh, little kid there. Uh, great film. Uh, great drama. It's um, Mel Gibson. It's a teacher. Got like burnt off face. It's, I think, pretty sure it's burnt off or acid. I can't remember. Um, very good. Directed by Mel Gibson as well. This is uh, Italian import. Man without a face. Man up. Netflix. If you've seen this film, the dance scene to Reflex by Duran Duran is such a good film. Late Bell. Beautiful. Man Who Knew Infinity, Dev Patel, Jeremy Irons. This is a this is a German release, and they don't they haven't put the little thing on there. And they've got art on the inside. This is quite unusual, quite unusual for a German release. In case you can't see that, it's all mathematics. Story of a maths genius. Man Who Knew Too Much, um, James Stewart, Doris Day. Rest in peace, Doris Day. Man Who Invented Christmas, great movie. Dan Stevens plays Charles Dickens. Christopher Plummer plays um, Ebenezer Scrooge. Um, Jonathan Price, who was Sparrow in Game of Thrones, he plays Charles Dickens' dad, who's a right leech. The story of how Charles Dickens came to write The Christmas Carol, what was going on in his life at the time, how he got inspiration. Just a really nice Christmas film. This was an American import. Plays perfectly fine on UK TVs, but it's now out in the UK anyway, so you don't need to import it. Man with the Iron Heart, true story about um, the architect of the Holocaust. Oh, Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I always said Winnie the Pooh, I thought it should be in the W's, but it's Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Number 22 of the classics. Winnie the Pooh. Marathon Man. Uh, God, this is a hard watch as well. Um, admittedly, I haven't seen this since it came out. I don't think it came out... Uh, I think it was the 70s. Pretty sure it's the late 70s. And that that scene, I don't know if you can see that, uh, of the guy drilling Dustin Hoffman's tooth to try and get information, to, well, to ask if it's safe. Um Number 82 of the HMV Premium Collection from 19... Oh, there it is, on the thing, 1976. Ooh, that was a hot summer. Marauders, uh, FBI chasing bank robbers. Uh, Marjorie Prime. I'm pretty sure this was the one with the lady. Husband died years and years ago, and she has, like, a hologram of him to just sort of talk. It's like a drama thing. Margin Call with the disgraced... Kevin Spacey, uh, great cast in this, Demi Moore, Stanley Tucci, Zachary, uh, Zachary Quinto, old Spock, or new Spock, should I say, Marley and Me, Hard Watch if you have dogs, um, dogs of a certain age for sure. Um, I've got dogs that are now 12 and 9, coming to the end of their time, although I'm sure they've both got another 20 years in them. 
and uh, Marmaduke. Now, this film, believe it or not, has such a good cast. It's got Owen Wilson, who I really do like. Um, William H. Macy, Steve Coogan, Sam Elliott, Emma Stone, Christopher Mintz Plazzi, that little kitty from Kick-Ass. And there you go. Although, be it, Owen Wilson does the voice of Marmaduke. Uh, pause it there and get the next pile. Okay, welcome back. Now, got a hat on. It's been seconds for you, but since the last one, I think it was Marmaduke was the last movie I showed you. Someone came to the door. Uh, we had visitors. Um, I went to town, got a haircut. You can see it's a little bit sort of shaved. And uh, had something to eat, a latte. So this is a couple of hours later. Where do we get to? Uh, Marnie, Alfred Hitchcock. T.P. Hendren, probably best known uh, for a role in The Birds. Sean Canary. Sean Canary. This one was in a trade between me and uh, Movie Edge. Marion Man, I've not seen this one yet. Alec Baldwin, Kim Basinger. This one was a Monday's pickup. You'll probably, so you're probably seeing this before my out and about because I didn't do an out and about on Monday because my wife went to hospital and an operation. She's on the mend. Thanks for your well wishes. So I've picked up a couple of films in between and uh, I'm going to show this as next week's out and about as well. So we'll combine the two together. It's going to be a double week out and about next week. Mary Queen of Scots. It's a true story based on um, Mary, uh, Queen of Scotland, if you like. And um, she tries to sort of take the throne from Elizabeth I. We all know how that ended. <clears throat> we should know. Uh, Mars Attack, great film, great cast. Um, I love the aliens in there, the big heads and uh, Tom Jones. Yeah, it's just a really good dark comedy. Michael J. Fox is in this. <clears throat> Ooh, really thirsty. Let's get a quick sip of drink while you look at The Martian. Uh, the Martian, yes, uh, Ridley Scott. A really good film, I enjoyed this. It's... Um, about a guy who's on a mission to Mars with a bunch of his crew while he's there. I think there's a storm or something. I can't remember what actually happens on Mars. Pretty sure it's a storm. And he gets left behind. They all take off. They think he's dead. Take off back to Earth. Mourn in their lost crewman. Turns out he's still alive. He gets a message to them. And so they have to back turn and come back and rescue him. Do they have back turn and rescue on the way back? Or do they make it to Earth and then go back? I'm pretty sure they just turn back and get him. But it's a really good film. Good character study. Marvellous. Not seen this yet. Five pound from CEX. That sticker will come off. It's a um, football movie. Uh, or as you say in America, soccer. Stars the great Toby Jones. Really like his acting. And that's why I got it. So I need to watch that one. Ooh, uh, Mary and the uh, Witch's Flower. It's about a girl who's given magical powers from a plant. <clears throat> magical plant. I really do like anime. And that's, a, that's a good one. Who does the voices in there? Kate Winslet's in this. Jim Broadbent. Good distinguished uh, voices. And Evan Ewan Bremer. Mary Mag Magdalene, the story of Mary Magdalene. Um, some say she was a prostitute. Others say that she was a woman of virtue. Mary Magdalene. Rumi Mara. Joaquin Phoenix is in that as well. Chewy Tail Edge of Four is in this as well. And no one else I recognise. A good cast. May Poppins. Classic. Um, what year was this one? I think it was 68. Uh, not that it matters. Um, great old fashioned Disney movie um, news has just come in that 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and In Search of the Castaways is coming to Disney Blu-ray um, movie club exclusive thing so I'm going to get Steve to get me them if he would obviously I'll get him something in return uh, of his choosing Mary Poppins great film of its time just such a good film and uh, uh, Dick Van Dyke, just so good in this. Uh, Julie Andrews, obviously, is Mary Poppins. Saying that, Emily Blunt is Mary Poppins in this one. This is Mary Poppins Returns, set 
I think it's something like 20 years later, maybe 20, maybe a little bit more. The children in this are now the adults and uh, you've got Dick Van Dyke playing. Um, he's the son of one of the old bankers in that in the, the original. It's really good. It's nice, such a good heart back, nice nod to the original. Love it. Mary Poppins is really good in that. Good song, good catchy tunes. Mary Riley. So I'm on a squeaky chair. <laughs> uh, Mary Riley. Uh, this is the uh, Region A Locked, it says on there. It is not. It plays perfectly. This is an American release. Uh, Julie Roberts plays Mary Riley. Mary Riley is the housekeeper to um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Same person. Just alter egos of, uh, of the other one. Uh, she plays a mate. Uh, it's quite, it's not the most action packed film. Don't go in it thinking it's all going to be Jekyll and Hyde. This is not. MASH. Uh, love the TV show. The film, if you watch the TV show and love it, you, uh, you're in for shock if you think it's going to be like that. It's not. Played a little bit darker, comedy wise, um, more gritty. I loved the TV show, seen every episode, loved MASH. I wish it had come out on Blu-ray. It's one big box set. Brilliant. Uh, MASH, yeah. Uh, you've got Elliot Gould, Donald Sutherland, in the roles of uh, uh, Pierce and Honeycutt. Yeah. Mask. Uh, the Mask. Jim Carrey. Everybody's seen this. Well, I saw this at the cinema. Actually, I went to see... Uh, Ace Ventura and they played the trailer to this and while I was sat there waiting for Ace Ventura and they played the trailer for this I wanted to see this more <clears throat> Ace Ventura is a great film don't get me wrong but uh, the effects you just wanted to see this film immediately it's such a good film and a very young well, not young not like 10 or anything she's a woman grown woman um, Cameron Diaz I think this was a debut appearance I'm pretty sure it was Mask of Zorro. I must put that with uh, the other one. Where was the other one? Is it Legend of Zorro? Antonio Banderas, Anthony Hopkins. Master and Commander. This is a game of cat and mouse set during the Napoleonic War. Um, yeah, just British Navy trying to get revenge for um, being attacked by the French. <laughs> yeah. Great film. Makes you feel proud to be British. British? British. Masterminds. They call this the Hillbilly Heist. $17 million. Um, Zach Galifianakis, Owen Wilson, Christian Wig, Jason Sudeikis. This was an Australian import. This didn't get a UK release. Got bad reviews, that one. Matchstick Men. Nicholas K. They're a bunch of con artist and then uh, a long lost daughter they, they didn't know uh, he didn't know he had turns out a 14 year old girl claims that he's his uh, lost daughter and whatever ensues after that Matilda good book well wow, dull um, and the, the film's pretty good too Dan DeVito real per, uh, Rhea Pillman and she married to Danny DeVito at one point um, Milton Cheers I think Pam Ferris as uh, the evil teacher, Trunchbull, something like that. And Mary Wilson. What happened to Mary Wilson? Good little actress. All right. Um, Miracle 34th Street. Matinee. Uh, John Goodman. Brilliant B-movie. I did have this as a German release. I'm pretty sure I gave it away to somebody. Pretty sure I did. I saw I sent it off. Uh, this is narrow release. And you do get alternate artwork. That one, I don't know if you can see that, but I like the way you move. No, I like that one. And this comes with a load of extras. Pretty sure it does. Yes, it does. A lot of extras. <clears throat> it's about a guy who sets up a cinema and it's he's got all the latest things, you know, like shaking chairs and all that sort of thing, just enhance your viewing. Matrix, I saw this about uh, about three or four weeks ago. Thought, whack it on, see how it's held up. And it holds up pretty good. It does. Now, obviously, it's been parodied a lot with the old bullet time and 
Great movie, great movie, loved it. Not seen this for a while though, not for years. And um, I don't remember a lot, it's really confusing. I can't, uh, this one and the evolutions, or revolutions should I say. I don't know, I can't remember a great deal about those two. They sort of merge into one. I know like key sequences on the, and on the highway or freeway, what you want to call it, and uh, they're jumping from car to car and um, what's the names on the bike, motorbike. <clears throat> Matter of life and death. Guy cheats death um, in so much as he's, uh, he should have died in a parachute drop or a plane crash. I can't remember which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's a parachute drop. His chute doesn't open or something like that. No, it's plane crashes. And, uh, yeah, he has to prove his worth against a um, celestial tribunal. A bit like Heaven Can Wait. Maverick. Uh, good film, this one. Uh, James Garner. Brilliant James Garner. Jodie Foster, Mel Gibson. It was a TV show in the Maverick. And um, Mel Gibson is Maverick. Uh, Card Shark and uh, Con Artists set in the, uh, the Old West. It's a really good film. And on the, the Mississippi paddle steamer thing, it's really good. Very, very good. Good comedy, old-fashioned action. Max. Now, this is about a um, uh, a soldier dog that uh, gets injured, I believe, and uh, he, ha he is sent back to his owner to live with. And there's old-fashioned friendship. There was another one as well. Sergeant... Sergeant Vex, I think it's a similar sort of thing. Max, very difficult to watch these kind of films with my dogs because they're not a big fan of animals on screen. I watched that Patrick the other day. My God, my dog barked from start to finish. He barked the whole way through it. Let's pause it there. Max Payne, I actually enjoyed this film. I didn't know anything about the computer game, so... I didn't have that sort of, I assume it was a computer, I'm pretty sure it was a computer game. I didn't have that sort of uh, bias to it when it first came out. Uh, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, it was kind of um, supernatural in places. But pretty good. It's Mark Wahlberg as Max Payne. Pretty good. Uh, Maze. Now this is about a security um, prison break uh, in uh, the IRA prisoners from HM... P. Mays High Security Prison. It's the, I think the the biggest escape prison escape since World War Two. I think that was what made it famous. Thirty eight prisoners escaped from this one prison. Story of that. Maze Runner. This is a pretty good film. Enjoyed this. Uh, came a series. Really intrigued to see how that went. That was good. I popped it in a black case. I don't know why, but I did. So the second one went in a black case. Uh, Scorch Trials, not as good as the first one. This idiot here, he states the obvious in every single situation. It's like um, people are shooting at him, he chatted. They're shooting at us, run away, that sort of thing, you know. Or, oh, God, it's just, it comes across a river. We're going to have to swim for it, you know. It's just like, state the obvious. So they came as a black uh, in a black case. Well, they didn't come, but I put them in a black case. And I put the third one in a black case as well. They all look nice together. Uh, Maze Runner Death Cure, and I can't remember a lot about... Uh, no, I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen this one. I can't remember a lot about the second one so much. First one's really good. Really good story. Uh, it's about going through these different trials. and well, to get from. It's like a... It's, just imagine it as like um, a computer game. You've got to get through levels. First one, uh, you, you just wake up. You're in a lift going up to like ground floor, and it's just... Um, like a big opening of trees and fields <clears throat> but around it is uh, this maze this concrete maze that's moving all the time and if you ever get into this maze you don't make it alive usually because there's something in there hunting you down so you've got to get so the first thing is to get through this maze that's the first one it's the maze runner and then you have the scorch trial I can't remember a lot about that and then you got the third one but the second one was pretty good, if I remember. Just that I can't remember a lot about it. First one's brilliant. Third one, I've got no idea. I need to watch a third one. McCabe and Mrs. Miller. Uh, Mrs. Miller uh, 1971, number 58 in the HMV collection. 
McFarlane USA. Kevin Costner doing his sports thing again. He trains up a team to like um, like competition level. A little bit beyond that, yeah, like championship level. The cross country athletics team. Mean Girls. Sequel to that somewhere. I need to get that. Uh, Meat Train. This is uh, Bradley Cooper and Vinnie Jones. What a pairing that is. Meat Train. Midnight. Meat Train. Uh, Meat Train. Me Before You. Uh, Emilia Clark and Sam Claffin. Uh, Sam Claffin. I think he was in the new film Patrick. That I was talking about with the pug. Um, I think he played the the sleazy vet in that. And of course, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones. Me, Earl, and Dying Girl. German release. That guy and his friends who sort of do um, like spoof films, sort of, you know, like a reenactment. It's a bit like um, Be Kind Rewind. And he strikes up a friendship with a girl who happens to be diagnosed with cancer. The Mechanic. I'm pretty sure this was a Burt Reynolds re uh, remake. Jason Statham, Ben Foster, good movie, very, very good movie. Some really sort of inventive um, hitman. It's the story of a hitman, so I'm saying the mechanic is a hitman. And then you have the second one. There's a great scene with the, um, what, what he's doing there, with the swimming pool, like um, above, it's like on the top floor of a building, but it sort of overhangs the building. Like that. So there's like, so he's got, he kills him in there. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Not very well. Uh, the Meddler. Susan Sarandon. Rose Byrne. AK, um, J.K. Simmons. Australian release. The Meg in 3D. 3D is very, very good in this. Uh, my brother-in-law saw this recently and thought it was a pile of garbage. Uh, I quite liked it. Rain Wilson. I like Rain Wilson. I like um, Jason Statham too. Meet Dave. This was a German... Yeah, German release. Again, they haven't got the little Lego thing on there, the uh, age restriction. Funny film. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, what's, what's his name? God, Eddie Murphy, and he is like a well, he's like a, he is a robot. And they've got like an alien race living inside him, sort of working. A bit like uh, in Men in Black, you know, like uh, all in the face, working things, and he's on a mission. And it's all the shenanigans he gets up to. Uh, meet Joe Black, Brad Pitt, Anthony Hopkins. Who's the girl? Claire Forlani? Claire Forlani? I don't know. Meet me in St. Louis. Um, what's that song? Um, oh, my goodness me. I forget the Christmas, the Christmas song in it. Oh, that's going to bug me. I'm going to have to look it up after this. Meet the Parents. Great, funny, great, funny film. Um, Robert De Niro is perfect in this role. Ben Stiller's the hapless boyfriend, always getting it wrong. Owen Wilson as the, the Lothario, who's uh, the ex-boyfriend, who's perfect. Just really, really good humour. Meet the Fockers, not as good as the first one. Uh, you've got um, Dustin Hoffman, Barbara Streisand. Now, I like both of those actors, but I didn't like them particularly much, uh, that much in that film. And then Little Fockers slides off it even a little bit further. Um, yeah, just stick with the first one. Meet the Robinsons. Uh, this is number 47 of the Disney Classics. I'm pretty sure this has got a 3D release somewhere, but uh, I have not got it. Or oh, I'm sure I saw it in the cinema in 3D. Megamind in 3D. Uh, this is really good. And I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt plays uh, this superhero here. Like uh, the arch enemy of Megamind. Megamind is so funny. Spiders. A couple of nice little picture discs. Memento. <clears throat> Quite a warped film. Um, I'm pretty sure in the extras there is a version of this that's played because it's sort of played out of sequence. Maybe backwards, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure 
either on this one or the DVD, there was a version of it when it's played like linear. Very good. Uh, Guy Pierce, such a. Oh, Carrie Ann Moss is in that as well. Memoirs of an Invisible Man. I've had this for maybe a couple of years. It's a German import. It is available in the UK now. Very funny film. Chevy Chase accidentally becomes the Invisible Man and he's trying to sort of solve it as he's going along. And he also has a love interest in Daryl Hannah. Such a funny. When he goes out for dinner with her and uh, he's like wiping his face and all the, like, the makeup comes off. Just so funny. Memories to go. This is also known as Diminished Capacity. And it's um, Matthew Bodrick, Virginia Madsen, Alan Alda. Matthew Bodrick is uh, like a, I think he's a sports reporter or a news reporter. Starting to lose his memory a little bit. Goes home to visit his uh, uncle, look after him, who has like uh, an onset of uh, Alzheimer's. But the story is that, um, just see, I'm pretty sure... Uh, no, I thought that was an actor I recognise, but it isn't. Um, yeah, he goes back to look after his his uncle, and his uncle's got this very valuable baseball card, which uh, he kind of gets conned out of. Somebody buys it off him, who's like a dealer, and doesn't give him like half as much as it's worth. So they they decide to go and get it back, and just a really nice sort of character driven film. Memories to go. It's a German release diminished capacity in the uh, in the UK and America when it's on DVD. I don't think it's got a release anywhere else. It might do. Memphis Bell. Me, myself and Irene, a story of a split personality, uh, police officer, played brilliantly by Jim Carrey. Um, yeah, very good film, very funny. Men and Chicken. Now this is an odd one. This is uh, like, I think it's a couple of brothers who find out that they're not uh, related and they are not uh, actually like biologically related to their parents that he's they're adopted uh, when their father dies they find all this out so they go and search for these people I can't remember how it goes it turns out that they find more family members and uh, but they've all got a link somehow so it's, check out the trailer but the trailer doesn't do it justice it's very very weird film let's pause it there Okay, next one is the Men in Black Trilogy. I'm going to have to, have to buy all the old cases again because uh, I put it in these and they're making another bloody Men in Black film. So uh, I'm going to, uh, you got the 3D version in this one and one and two. One's the best one. I like the third one. I thought the third one was pretty clever with the time travel. I enjoyed that one. And um, Josh Brolin did a really good job as a uh, young Tommy Lee Jones. Um, have yourself a very Merry Christmas. That was the song in Meet Me in St. Louis. Have yourself a very... Uh, Messengers. Uh, quite a creepy film, that one. Uh, Kristen Stewart. Very creepy, I thought. Uh, what have we got here? Men of Honor. Uh, true story. Cupid Gooden Jr. was the first um, Afro-American deep sea diver. I don't know when this was set. 60s maybe um i don't know and you had his like instructor played by Robert de niro was an absolute mean son of a bitch just a really good biopic it's a biopic of kubi gun jr's character i forget what his name is now carl uh brashier just brilliant absolutely brilliant when he sort of he sends him down to do a task and you have to pass this task uh in like the icy depths and he, and he sends him down a bag and his tools are all ripped open yeah oh, it's just really good many stare at goats this is a really odd film uh george clooney jeff bridges jeff bridges goodness ewan mcgregor kevin spacey it's like an interview ewan mcgregor's interviewing george clooney and uh it's about the cia or N nsa using like mind control trying to develop mind control in and the uh, US Army government. Uh, it's just a really odd, really odd film, like um, cloud busting with your mind and things like that. So, like Kevin Spacey, trying to run through walls because you believe you can, that sort of shit. It's good. Very good. 
mental, oddly enough, comes after that one. Mercury Rising, a very good Bruce Willis film. He's the story of uh, code breaking. Uh, these two guys, they, they hide this code inside this like word search thing and this young autistic boy solves it, phones the number and it sets off a chain of events that um, his life's now in danger, this boy, because he cracked this code. It shouldn't have been crackable. So, um, Alec Baldwin plays the crooked um, intelligence officer who's in charge of everybody. and So he sets out to kill the two guys that did the code and the boy. I'm pretty sure he sets out to kill the two guys as well. Um, but Bruce, um, Bruce Willis comes in and he is uh, Art Jeffries and he protects the boy. It's very, very good. Merry freaking Christmas. This is um, Robin Williams. I'm saving this one to watch. Saving it. I might watch it this Christmas because I read it a couple of years. Merry Christmas. Now this is a German release. Had this on DVD and you could hear, you you had subtitles of the, the foreign parts on the DVD, but on this, it's, uh, where it's got German, you've only got like German subtitles for some reason. So unless you're pretty well, you know, you can speak a bit of German, probably not going to appeal to you this release. But a very good, it's 1914 when they uh, stopped um, fighting on Christmas Eve because of the, uh, the you know, because it was Christmas and they, all, they got up and played football with each other and true story. Very moving. Uh, Meru, I've not seen this one, Meru. Mercy, this is Colin Firth, Rachel Vice, true story, guy who kind of fake, no, I'm, I'm not going to give it away. Uh, no, I, I can't give it away. Can't give it away. Watch the trailer. It's a good film. Messengers, this is, uh, I think you can buy this in the pang shop now, I saw someone buy it. Ben Foster, Woody Harrelson, Samantha Morton. What have I seen her in for? Uh, she was in Samantha Morton. She's the new alpha in um, Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the two soldiers have to turn up at your door to tell you that uh, your son or daughter has been killed in combat. Message in a Bottle. This is a German release and it's Kevin Costner. And I haven't seen this in years and I cannot remember much about it. But I do like Kevin Costner and I will watch anything with Kevin Costner in. Uh, just trying to see how long the film is because 131 minutes. Uh, Metropolis. Don't know why they put the cover that way. That's very, very annoying. Uh, Metropolis. Fritz Lang again, who did the M film about the, um, the child killer. This is like um, the shape of things to come. The Mexican. I believe the Mexican is the name of the two pistols that are in this film, like the MacGuffin. This is a Spanish release. I haven't seen this for years, but I remember liking it. Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts. Miami Vice. Now, this is a bit of a letdown because I think we were watching the TV show with Don Johnson and the other guy, Crockett and Tubbs. And uh, it didn't really do it justice, I don't think. It's a pretty decent enough film. They just called it something different, although the characters are Crockett and Tubbs in this. Uh... Yeah, Sonny Crockett and uh, Ricardo Tubbs. TV show was better. Michael Clayton. Uh, I've only seen half of this. And I saw half at the cinema. I had to leave the cinema. Um, but I did enjoy what I saw. It's about a fixer. A fixer. Michael Collins. Uh, based on a true story. Uh, the man who uh, negotiated Ireland's break with the UK. And now we're trying to negotiate a break with Europe. Middlemen. Midnight Express. This, uh, I saw this when it first came out. Um, 1978. This was a difficult watch, especially for like a 10 year old. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a guy um, who, Billy Hayes, he smuggles, it's a true story, smuggles drugs into Turkey and he's caught cool, and he's made an example of in the worst possible ways. And I can't give the end in a way. It's a good film. Watch this film, the, the brutality and for what? At the end of it, for the, you know. 
Midnight in Paris, kind of like a time travel film of sorts. A guy who looks for inspiration and uh, goes for walks at midnight and things happen. Owen Wilson's in that. I think that's directed by Woody Har uh, Woody, <laughs> Woody Harrelson. Woody Allen. A little bit of plastic again. It's the second bit of plastic to fall off a... Midnight Run, Charles Grodin and uh, Robert De Niro. I think they've... Did they remake that recently? I'm pretty sure they have. Midnight Special. Uh, is this the one I'm thinking of? With Michael Shannon. With Is this one with the, the special child? And there's like more of them, and they and it's like a road movie, road, road journey. And you think that um, Michael Shannon's a wrong one, but he's not. If I remember right, that's pretty. That's a pretty good film. Midnight Sun. Who's in this? Oh, that's right, Patrick Schwarzenegger. Patrick Schwarzenegger. Midway. Uh, yes, uh, Charlton Heston, Henry Fonda. I picked this up in uh, what was that? Barnes and Noble in the U.S. Midway. Uh, right, this one is it's gonna be a shout out to Steve Cashier One. Uh, go and check his channel out, Cashier One. I'll try and put a link down below, as I will for you, Mike, as well. Um, the Mighty Ducks. This is a Disney Movie Club exclusive. You can only get this if you live in America and you belong to the Disney Movie Club. I've said it before. I'm a bit bitter about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Mighty Ducks. Great film. Great movie. And then you have. Uh, D2, so I'm putting these together because they're part of a series. Mighty Ducks 2. And Disney actually started off a Mighty Ducks um, ice hockey team on the strength of these films. And of course, the third one, D3, the Mighty Ducks, Emilio Estevez. He doesn't make enough films. I want to see that film that he did with the library, but I don't know if it's ever going to get a release. Okay, here we go. HMV. Uh, HMV um, Premium Collection, Mighty Joe Young from 1949, number 77. Kind of, well, if you've seen this one, it's more up to date. Um, this is, again, Steve, thank you, Cashier One. Mighty Joe Young, the um, the Disney film, Bill Paxton, late Bill Paxton. And who's the girl? Is it Bonnie, Bonnie Hunt? Um, no, Charlize Theron. Charlie's Theron. It's uh, the young monkey. Uh, his parents are killed, um, or his mother's killed. He's taken away. He grows up big and strong, uh, a little bit bigger than normal, like 15 feet. It's like a mini King Kong. And uh, he's kind of looked after by Charlie Theron and and Bill Paxton to a certain degree. Uh, they have like a, a um, not an enclosure. What's the like a Big open fields for it to play in, if you like. And uh, the poacher that killed his mother, I forget who played him. He comes back because he wants to finish the job and kill him as well. Kill Mighty Joe Young because he's like... Um, no, I can't see the bloke's name. He's like the ultimate prize, if you like, for a hunter. Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Mile 22, now I've, saw, I've seen this, but can I remember what it's about? What is this about? Um, I can't remember a thing about this film. Peter Berg, so it's probably good. Peter Berg's a good director. Miller's Crossing. I need to put notes of when I see a film inside the film, so just to remind myself. Million Dollar Arm, this is a really good film. Um, it's about a baseball coach and he um, he needs to sort of get new players. Is he a coach or is he um, like a, a scout? But either way, he needs to get new players. So he looks in the most unusual of places. He goes to India to look at uh, cricketers and uh, like fast bowlers and stuff. It's an Australian release. It is. Is it a Disney? It's a Disney film, but it's an Australian release. Um, not available in the UK. I don't know if this is available in America either. Um, great film, real sort of, sort of one of those build momentum based on a true story as well. John Hamm. 
Million Dollar Baby. This is a great boxing film. I'm not a big fan of boxing films. Didn't like Ali, the uh, the Will Smith one, but I, I do have it. Um, about a reluctant coach who wants, who doesn't want to coach this girl, played by Hilary Swank, and she sort of almost forces herself to to be, you know, for him to uh, train her, and um, it has an unusual sort of an end you don't you don't really see coming. Don't. Don't look it up, like, you know, what happens or anything. Just watch the film, because it's really good. Uh, the Million Dollar Hotel. I bought this because um, Mel Gibson's it, and I've not seen it yet. This is looks like quite an early one. Uh, German released this. Uh, do, 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 do. I'd probably go for YouTube, uh, not for, through eBay and seeing all these titles. Oh, I'll have that one. Uh, 2012, it's not that long ago. Whoa. Mindhorn. <laughs> Now this is, actually this one should be first, come back to my home, uh, Mimic, I popped it in a green case, because look at that cover, ooh, it's creepy in it, like a bug, Guillermo de Toro film, that one, uh, yeah, Mindhorn, I was saying, <laughs> this guy, I'm pretty sure there's like a heist, or uh, not a heist, like a, 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 it's, it's, oh, a kidnapping or something, it's like a hostage situation. And the guy calls for uh, Mindhorn. And Mindhorn is like you call him for house if you want surgery. Or uh, Magnum if you want something to investigate. This guy was a TV character. He actually believes his own hype and uh, steps up to the plate. Mindhunters. I believe this is now a TV show. This has uh, Johnny Lee Miller. And that's the reason I bought this. Um, from Elementary and and uh, Hackers. Jolly Lee Miller, it's got Christian Slater in this and Val Kimmer on LL Cool J. It's about a bunch of, I think it's uh, like FBI agents that are all on one air, in one area, got to try and solve a crime. Uh, one of them's a killer, something like, something like that. Uh, mine. Minority Report, this is a really good Tom Cruise, Steven Spielberg collaboration. Um, Actually shaved his head for this. Uh, Samantha Morton's in this as well uh, from Walking Dead. Uh, it's hard one to explain. You've got uh, Tom Cruise. He heads up this task force that can foresee the future. Now they foresee the future because they have three like oracles for some reason like floating in water, and they uh, they can tell you who's going to get killed, when they're going to get killed, and who's going to kill them. And this information is etched onto a ball and it comes down and they read the ball and it sounds odd when I'm saying it like this. <laughs> and then they go and arrest this person for like a preemptive um, strike upon them before they commit the crime. They, and then their head's shaved, they're put in like cryostasis and stored in a big warehouse. Anyway, uh, Tom Cruise's name comes out, even though he's like squeaky clean, where he does take the odd drug because his child was kidnapped. Going off tangent there. Um, yeah, his name comes up as the next person to kill someone. So um, uh, he has to go on the run. And he's pursued by Colin Farrell. Didn't do it justice in that. Uh, Miracle. Colin. Uh, Colin. F Kurt Russell. Uh, Miracles from Heaven. Uh, I've not seen this one. Um, Jennifer Garner and Queen Latifah and a couple of other people. Miracle on 34th Street, the original with uh, uh, Edmund Gwen. I'm pretty sure he won an award for this. Natalie Wood, late Natalie Wood. Um, Glenn Lockhart, Porter Hall. Great movie. Okay. I prefer the remake, but that's a really good film. Here's a remake with Mara Wilson again, and it's uh, produced by John Hughes and has Father Christmas himself, Richard Attenborough. Elizabeth Perkins is an absolute cow in this film. Um, JT Walsh is in this, and uh, I forget the posh guy who shows in the house. I, uh, I ain't gonna give away the ending. The Mirror Cracked, uh, should be the Mirror Cracked from side to side. This is uh, based on the Agatha Christie book. This has Angela Lansbury, Tony Curtis, Edward Fox, great cast. I've read all the uh, Agatha Christie f uh, books. There's a uh, four, four release. This one. Death on the Nile, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, which should probably be coming up later. 
and another one. Mirror, mirror. Uh, young Lily Collins in this. Army Hammer, Julia Roberts. Got a few musical numbers in that. Mirrors, creepy as hell, I find this one. Uh, Kofa Sutherland, yes. The effects, though, if you just see the front, you see the effects are a little bit dated. Misery, oh. Misery. Makes me wince every time I think of that when she hobbles him. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Miss Congeniality, Miss Congeniality 2. Uh, why do they feel the need to put two films on one disc? I don't know. Great films. Sandra Bullock, so beautiful. Um, the first one, Michael Caine. God bless you, sir. Um, just a really good film. Second one, not as good. Nowhere near as good. But the first one, I think the first one's got William Shatner in it as well. It's just... just uh, oh, he's in the second one too, William Shatner. I don't think Michael Caine came back for the second one, though. The Mission, uh, Robert De Niro, Jeremy Irons. This is number 14 from 1986 of the HMV Premium. Miss Sloan. And on that note, we will pause it and uh, get the next part. There's probably like another 120 to go, so I'm going to push on really quickly, hopefully. Here we go with the next one. The next pile. We are into the Mission Impossibles. Now, when the first one came out and he did the old... Um, Lowering down in the, uh, was he in the Pentagon? On those ropes and like the bead of sweat. It was like, how did they do that? And it was parodied a lot, even in adverts. Just really good film. I think I prefer this out of all of them, to be, to be honest. I, I just really like the uh, the whole story with the, the face and the train. Very good. Uh, the uh, the Euro Tunnel train thing. Mission Impossible 2. I don't like this one at all. John Woo. What were you thinking with the doves flying and the and the motorbike with the wheels changing? You know, from off road to on road bikes. It's it just a. I didn't like it. Didn't like the film. Third one. Loved it. This is the one with. Um, oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Lawrence Fishburne. That's a really heavy, that's two discs, that's fine. Uh, yeah, great. Yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman plays a really good villain. And uh, the scene in the uh, the Vatican and all that, it's just, just brilliant. Ghost Protocol, this is the one where he's at the um, Baj Khalif. With the, the, the glove, the gloves, and mal the malfunctioning gloves. Jumping out the building, very good film. Fourth one, uh, what was the, the big thing in this one? Was this the one with the, he hangs on the side of the plane? Yeah, there he is, right in front of me, uh, hanging on the plane. Yeah, what's he gonna do? What, how far? And then this one where he falls off the helicopter onto the bag. I'm not giving away the story, it's just sort of the main stunts of the thing. When he, he break his ankle, his ribs or something, when he jumped off the building in London, landed on the other one a bit awkwardly. I really like this one as well, but I kind of, I like the first one. I don't know, I just, I think they're going a little bit, you're going a bit too far, Tom, you're going to end up killing yourself. Uh, Mission to Mars, I've not seen this in anybody's collection, uh, this this is a French release and it does have forced subtitles, which means you cannot get rid of the subtitles in French, um, but you soon forget about them, uh, to be honest. and the picture is beautiful on this disc, absolutely beautiful, good story. Uh, Brian De Palma, who's the, uh, Jerry O'Connell. If you can get past the fact that he's an astronaut, you'll probably enjoy this. Tim Robbins, just a really good, uh, it came out around the same, the same time as another Mission de Mar Red Planet, as one of, you know, when they do the, uh, the two stories are similar, like Armageddon, Deep Impact, that sort of thing. This one and Red Planet, which I do have. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. The 3D in this is really good. I love this film. I thought it was really good. Lots of really unusual characters. Eva Green. I do like Eva Green. Something about it. Um, so as a buzz of Butterfield in this as well. Yeah, he's everywhere, isn't he? Uh, Chris O'Dowell's good in this. Rupert Everett. Just a really good film. Like quirky Children with Gifts. 
Miss Potter. Um, don't we do with Harry Potter? The story of Beatrix Potter. This is a German, German release. I think. Didn't come out in the UK. Um, Rene Zellweger. Ewan McGregor. This is a biopic, and I do like biopics. And this is... Uh, it doesn't say if it's region free or not. It doesn't say any region on it at all. Uh, it is German because I can see it's written in German on the back, which you probably ain't going to make out on this camera. Story of uh, Beatrix Potter and when she's writing, well, really from when she starts to write, gets um, accepted on uh, like um, with the publisher, authors, publishing. Uh, who's headed up by Ewan McGregor about her sort of romance with him, a little bit of devastation in her life, and just a really nice biopic, well worth a watch. Miss you already. I've got to go and get going. There's I, I can't. There's about 280 films. The Mist um, is a black and white version and a color version. Not a bad film. Moana, very good 3D. I like the story. Catchy tunes. Who knew the rock could sing? Um, and what's the story of that big crab who sounds like Dave Barry? Um, good film. And the CGI, it's been all over me. So the CGI in that is phenomenal. Disney, they've done a deal with the devil. The water, that water looks real. Uh, Moby Dick, this is one, I think this has Patrick Stewart in it. I'm pretty sure it does. Although it's not credited on the back, so you might not. Donald Sutherland's in this, Gillian Anderson, Eddie Marsden, William Hurt, Ethan Hawke. Good cast, good story too. It's a German release. Um, Mojave. Molly's Game. Momentum. This did poorly, I think. At the cinema, I think it took like 40, 46 pounds, something, 48, 46 pounds, something like that. Um, Morgan Freeman. I think that was around about the last time he made a, a film. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. Mona Lisa's Smile. This is uh, this is a good movie. It's one of those sort of um, along the lines of Dead Poet Society sort of thing. Inspirational. Moneyball. Love this film. This is for me probably Brad Pitt's best film. He plays Billy Bean, um, the coach, and you've got Philip Seymour Hoffman again. Uh, Jonah Hill is in this. It's just a really good sports movie. Highly recommend that one. Maybe Dick. Did I have the other movie, Dick, just now? Uh, yeah, this should have gone a couple of films back. Uh, Moby Dick, Gregory, Pe uh, Gregory Peck in this one. I'm pretty sure I had one with Patrick Stewart. Um, this is uh, Hollywood Gold Series from Australia. Let me just put that in there with that one. Maybe Dick's should both be next to each other in the pile. Money for Nothing, uh, John Cusack. I think this is getting a re-release in the States, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, John Cusack. Went for a phase when I was collecting John Cusack films. Money Monster. Have a look at that cover while I have a sip of juice. This is surprisingly a good film. Well, not really surprisingly. You've got Julia Roberts and George Clooney. I enjoyed this film, but... Um, Somebody who wants answers more than revenge or anything. He just wants to know why his money uh, was t sort of invested poorly and just dismissed. Um, and he wants answers from George Clooney, who runs like a um, advice show for your money, you know, like investments and stuff. Very good. Comes in, takes over the uh, the TV show thing with high uh, sort of um, um, kidnapping sort of thing. Money Pit, great film. Uh, Tom Hanks, Shelley Long, the, the scene with the turkey um, when it shoots out of the oven and sets off a chain of events. Oh, it's just so funny. And Tom Hanks is laughing. It's just a really good, really good. And anybody who ever done up a house will probably get something out of this. The Money Pit. This is a German release. Great movie. One of Tom Hanks' is best. Money Train, I love this film. Heist movie, Woody Harlson, kind of set around Christmas as well. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, and they work the transit authority side of things, and they decide to rob the money train. Very, very good. And the 
idiot that's uh, in charge of the train system. Um, I'm going to guess it's Robert Blake. Plays it well. He plays an asshole. Plays it really well. Uh, Monkey Bones. What's the story with the covers that go right to the top? I hate that. A bit like Criterion. Um, yeah, Monkey Bones. Anyway, you can get it there. 101 Films release. Monkeys Go Home. Um, Steve, Cashier One. Go and check him out. Sent me this. Did a trade. Monkeys Go Home. Disney Movie Club. Love these old Disney films. Monster Calls. Now, this is, again, like a metaphor, like I Kill Giants, that kind of thing. Uh, this time it's voiced as a big tree, voiced by uh, Liam Neeson. You've got Sigourney Weaver in this, and Felicity Jones as well. Monster House in 3D. It came with a clear case, I think. Yeah, like you can see, i do that. You can see the clear case. If you take that down, it's like... The case is it's actually printed on the case. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh no, you got like two covers. You got um, underneath there, you got one cover and you got a second cover. Good, it gives you like a 3D effect on the, um, the artwork as well. It's good because I don't have slip covers, so it's like a lenticula if you like. Decent film, the, C uh, the CGI is obviously a bit dated. Monster in Paris in 3D. I've not seen this one yet, but um, I've heard the 3D is very good in this one. I've had this for quite a time as well. It's on the makers of Shark Tale, or the director of Shark Tale. Monsters. This was made on a budget by a guy um, with his little laptop. He did all the effects on his laptop. I think it's like 150 effects in this, but it's just like changing things like signposts. It's, it's all sort of filmed on a, a budget camera. Although uh, it's quite good quality. And it's, a, it's a road movie as such. Um, half of the United States is in lockdown because uh, like an alien DNA has come back and all these monsters now roaming across America and they're all walled in. So there's a no-go zone going across America. And these this couple, who actually sort of struck up a real life relationship during the film, I think they're married now, they had to get across... Uh, in a hurry instead of going round they decided to cross through the infected area and um, it's about the journey and it's it's really good really nice alien film and then there was a sequel Monsters Dark Continent and uh, I've not seen this one uh, I wanted to see it but my wife hated the first one I loved it so it's just getting an opportunity to watch it really I think he's Given a lot more of a budget in that film. I think he made the first one for like, I don't know, say $5 million or something like that. Which in movie terms is not a lot of money. And Monsters vs. Aliens. There is an actual real 3D version of this floating about. Uh, this is one that you need the little paper glasses, which ain't ever going to happen. Uh, I want to get the, the real 3D version of this. This is so funny. Seth Rogen does the blob voice. you got the, <laughs> the, the little cockroach voiced by Hugh Laurie. Um, Oh, who does the the woman, the, the giant woman, um, Susan? Oh, God, I forget her name. What is her name? Oh, that's gone now. That's gone. Completely gone. And it doesn't say on here either. You're probably all shouting at me at the moment. Saying, move on, move on. I'm going to have to move on. Uh, the tall woman voiced really well. And you've also got... Uh, another couple of creatures in this but it's the the warmonger the the little um not donald sutherland his son uh Kofi sutherland who plays warmonger he steals the scene really good and the president as well <laughs> so funny uh monsters inc disney uh disney pixar so it's not a classic one and then you got the sequel in 3d don't know if the first one's in 3d but the sequel certainly is just checking the time it's called cool past three um Monsters University. I've not seen the 3D in that one. Or have I seen this one yet either? Monster Trucks. I don't know why, but I thought this was in 3D for some reason. Uh, monsters Living in uh, Underneath Trucks. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Now, I saw this at a cinema. That's how old I am. Uh, 1974. 15, 1974. I wasn't 15 in 1974. <laughs> Okay, they were a little bit laxy daisy back then. I was, uh, you know, I, I got thrown out of my first pub when I was fourteen, so it gives you an idea, you know, <laughs> how laxy daisy uh, 
people were back in the 70s. Uh, yeah, Holy Grail. Oh, it's just so funny. With the, they had the, uh, the coconut things to do the horses because they couldn't afford to use horses. The killer rabbit. Oh, What is your favourite colour? Life of Brian. <laughs> Equally as funny. Um, amazing characters. Just brilliant. Um, he's not the messiah. She's <laughs> really good. Uh, the, tell you really it's about a quest to try and find the holy grail and this one is uh, mistaken identity uh they th um brian is born like a stable over and uh he's mistaken by the three wise men as jesus christ and he has this sort of problem all through his life people mistaking him for christ even to the point where he's on a cross always look on the bright side of life a brilliant song at the end um monuments men this is a really good movie it's um Set after uh, World War Two or coming to the end of World War Two, when they're trying to get back uh, stolen artwork and the cast you got: George Clooney, Matt Damon, Bill Murray, John Goodman, Hugh Bonneville, Kate Blanchett. Just a really good, uh, you know, it's not all action-packed. They're um, like historians and, and artists trying to get back the art from the, the um, Germans have stolen and stored in like salt mines and stuff before the Russians get all of them. Yeah, it's just really good. Moon. You can't really say a lot about this without giving a major plot point away. Um, no, I can't even say that. Um, yeah, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell, really good. Don't look Don't look at any reviews. Of if you haven't seen this, don't look at reviews or anything because you can't really say anything about that about giving it away. Uh, Moonstruck, Cher and Nicolas Cage. Moonrise Kingdom. I thought this was a criteria. I thought this came out on Criterion. We're thinking of another one. This is Wes Anderson, yeah. Um, Wes Anderson. So it's probably going to get a Criterion. What a cast in this one. Bruce Willis, Edward Norton, Bill Murray again. Gets everybody. Tilda, uh, Tilda Swinton. Um, Francis McDormand. A lot of Oscar winners there. Let's pause it there. Get the next batch of films. Okay, here we go. Um, three piles left. Uh, Mum and Dad, Nicholas Cage, and Selma Blair, uh, Morgan. For Saint Uh Morning Glory. Harrison Ford, good role. Harrison Ford uh, is about a guy who believes in his own hype. He's too good for anything. He's offered this morning show. Uh, with Rachel uh, Rachel McAdams, um, I think she directs. I don't think she starts. No, she directs it. And uh, yeah, he thinks he's above it. Harrison Ford, I'm talking about. But he's he's got like a scoop, and he sort of it's just about uh, this like I think it's Morning in America or something the, the TV show. Um, it's Rachel McAdams' big break of directing this thing, and. Um, Diane Keaton's in this as well as as like a, the other anchor. You can see you got them, you got these two working together on the breakfast show. She's directing it. She's giving him direction. He doesn't want to do it. He thinks it's all beneath him. Uh, and then he finds his scoop, and they all work together. It's just a really nice film. Uh, how he sort of comes around to accepting his lot in life, if you like. Mortal Engines. I love this film. Uh, 3D is really good in this. Um, England portrayed as the baddie, as per usual. Uh, <laughs> Well, given our past, you know. Mortal Instruments, uh, City of Bones. This was going to be a, se uh, a series of films, but they just stopped. And I thought this was a really good film. It's like uh, hidden signs and like a hidden world and evil, good versus evil. Good movie. Mortar Kai, Johnny Depp. Uh, Most Wanted Man. That's Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mosquito Coast again. This is uh, Harrison Ford ups and moves his family into the jungle. They're a bit reluctant, and he's a little bit obsessed, and to say the least. Uh, this was pretty sure it was a Spanish La Costa de la Mosquitos. Did I say that right, Ben? Uh, yeah, it's a very good Harrison Ford film. I'm pretty sure. But I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure 
Uh, Sean Connery's in this for like a few seconds. No, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Another loose bit of plastic. Where are these bits of plastic coming from? Uh, mother, this is Jennifer Lawrence. I'm gonna move on because this is gonna be forever. Mother and child. I did the L's and it was like half this and it was like an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, motherhood. This is uh, Uma Thurman, Ed, um, Anthony Edwards, Goose from Top Gun, or uh, Doctor Green from ER. In case you don't know who he is. Uh, Mother's Day and Mother's Day. Uh, not a brilliant film. Entertain, but not a brilliant film. Uh, Mothman Prophecies. This is a really good film. Uh, Richard Gere out uh, trying to solve the. the like an X-File of the Mothman prophecies. It's quite creepy in places. This was a German release. Don't know if it has a release anywhere else. It probably does. I had it on DVD and I put the old chapter list inside because I, I like the old chapter lists. Moving McAllister. I bought this because uh, John Heater, Mila Kunis is in this and with Gahawa and uh, I've yet to see it. Um, John Heater. Do you say John Heater or John Header? It should be John. John Header? I don't know. I kind of like, like his acting. He was in Blades of Glory. Mountain Between Us. This is um, this is a good film. Uh, two people get stranded on a mountain uh, after a plane crash. I don't think it's based on a true story. Uh, doesn't say. They usually put that on the cover. Uh, yeah, but it's all about Idris Elba and Kate Winslet trying to get to safety. And uh, very, very good. I like that good to watch out when it's winter and it's uh, cold outside mr and mrs smith this is the film that uh, these two paired up in in real life wasn't it it was uh, she he dumped jennifer anderson full and uh, went off jelly uh, angelina jelly two assassins um and the contract comes out uh, he has to kill her she has to kill him comedy ensues Mr. Baseball, I think this is getting an American release in a few weeks, German release, and it's really about, the whole joke is, well, um, Tom Selleck being about six foot plus, six foot two, I'd have said six foot three. Um, he is a baseball player and he gets transferred to uh, Japan, Japan, China, well, an Asian country. And the whole joke is about how tall he is, pretty much, and how to fit in. Magnum. <laughs> now he'd be uh, Frank from uh, Blue Bloods, I guess. Mr. Bean's Holiday. Um, this is a surprisingly difficult film to find. Uh, Mike, you want me to get you a copy of this? Uh, I'm having trouble finding it, but I will do it. Um, yeah, Rowan Atkinson. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean's Holiday. Mr. Brooks. Kevin Costner as a serial killer. Just really good. Being hunted down by Demi Moore. William Hurt as his um, um, voice of conscious, sort of alter ego, if you like. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde, eggs him on to kill more people. And Dane Cook, um, just somebody who discovers that um, Mr. Brooks is a serial killer and wants to be taught by him. Very, very good. If you can get past William Hurt as his conscience then, um, or his, uh, his alter ego, then very good film. Mr. Deeds. That's a remake, Mr. Deeds. Good remake, Adam Sandler, Monona Ryder. Mr. Holmes, very dry, slow film, but such a good character-driven film. I uh, love it. And it's a young kid in this. Uh, oh, I don't... Milo Parker. He went on to be in the Durrells, Durrells, or what they call it, a TV show. Uh, great little kid, great actor. And Ian McKellen as an aged Mr. Holmes. Starting to lose his uh, in memory and stuff. Very good. Mr. McGorium's Wonder Emporium. <sighs> Natalie Portman with short hair. Beautiful. <laughs> Simple as that. Mr. Nice. Mr. Pip. I was going through a phase where I wanted to watch uh, Hugh Laurie a lot because uh, I was missing house. And I imported this from Australia. Mr. Pip. Mr. 
Popper's Penguins. Uh, this was sort of the downside, the end of career of Jim Carrey. I know he's come back with Dark Crimes and he come back with another one as well, another or TV show as well. But good, I'm glad he's coming back. Mr. Popper's Penguins. Mr. Deeds uh, goes to town. I was going to say it goes to Washington. Oh, it goes to town. Um, Gary Cooper. This is HMV Premium Collection number 74 from 1936. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. That's the one I was thinking of. I've got two titles missed up. Um, Gene Arthur, James Stewart. Another HMV Premium, number 57 from 1939. Uh, Mr. Miniver, another HMV Premium. Uh, Greer Carson and um, Walter Pigeon. Number 88 from 1942. And they're all nice together. Uh, when I get my uh, library, my purpose-built library, I will put the slip covers back on them and have a dedicated area just for the HMV premiums with the slips on. Uh, Mr. Troop Mom. I don't even remember getting this. Um, I don't know. Mrs. Brown's Boys. Uh, my mother was a big fan of the TV show Mrs. Brown and she said this is absolutely crap. Um, the movie. She says nothing like the TV show. Mrs. Doubtfire. Classic. Robin Williams. And that Mary Wilson is in this as well. Uh, she had quite the career when she was a, a young girl. I don't think she's even listed on the back. Uh, the one from Milk on 38, uh, 34th Street. Sally Fields is good in this. Uh, the whole time. The whole time. Piers Brosnan. It was a tray by Fruitin. Uh, anyway, uh, Mr. Turner. This is a really good biopic of um, William Turner, the artist, and it's played brilliantly by Timothy Spall. When he's in the uh, the gallery and he adds that little dot of red, just really good. It's, it's quite a slow burn, again, as biopics usually are. Um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And touches on a bit of Constable's life as well. Uh, Mr. Woodcock. Sort of sex comedy, if you like. Uh, funny in places. Much Ado About Nothing. Great cast in this one. Kenneth Branagh, Richard Bryars, passed away now. Um, Michael Keaton, Robert Sean Leonard. He was um, the guy, he was the, the cancer specialist in house. Keanu Reeves, um, Emma Thompson, Denzel Washington. What a cast. Mud, uh, quite a slow burn film. Again, um, but really good. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, so he has like a friendship with these two boys when he's hiding out, and uh, just, just good film, base base sort of character driven again. Mulan, this is one they're going to remake as a live action thing, uh, number thirty six of the Disney classics. Like this film, apart from the guy who has that voice, uh, he was in, he did the, he was also in Independence Day. David, that one, he sings in it as well. It's awful. Uh, Munich, this is another HMV Premium Collection, number 52, 2005, about the Munich bombings and the revenge thereof. The Mummy, uh, yes, didn't have enough Universal Monster films, so I picked this one. This is really cheap, it's just a few pounds from HMV. The Mummy, the Brendan Fraser um, trilogy, and I really like this one. Rachel Weiss, John Hanna, very funny in this. Uh, just a really good old-fashioned style film, uh, sort of almost like Indiana Jones type. Uh, Mummy Returns, not as good, but still a good film. Same sort of cast returns, and then Mummy, the um, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Yeah, um, they should never have gone in that direction. And with the the Yetis that do like the field goal and uh, it's ridiculous in places. Tom Cruise, I love this film. Uh, the woman in it, I forget what her name is, Sophia Patella. Oh my gosh, she's beautiful. Um, yeah, uh, although she's got two pupils in each eye. Uh, yeah, it's Universal tried to rehash their, uh, or reboot their Universal Monsters. And this was met with, like, hatred, this film. I don't know why, I, I thought it was really good. The only thing I didn't like about it was, what's his name? Uh... 
Is it Jake Johnson? I don't know. His his friend, his best friend in it. He he died and he sort of come back to life and was giving him advice and stuff. I thought he was a stupid character. Didn't need him in it at all. Killed him off and left him there. Uh, Russell Crowe was good as uh, Jekyll, Doctor Jekyll. Uh, let's pause it there and get the last pile. What better way to start the last pile than with the Muppet films? And the first one, I said in an earlier version that the Patrick Stewart version of Christmas Carol was the best. I don't know, I'm going to have to retract that. It's the best live action, purely live action version. This is the best Muppet version by far. This is, this is absolutely flawless, this film. I love everything about it. Songs are catchy. Michael Caine, God bless you, sir, who... Um, who did the, uh, the the role of Ebenezer Scrooge? He played it to perfection. Apparently, he was like that on set all the time, you know, and off set. Just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. One of the as a must watch every single year. And uh, the Muppets, uh, the Great Muppet Caper, Muppet movie. Some of these cases I've made uh, my own because uh, I, I bought the box set and I didn't like. I don't like box sets. I like individual releases. Uh, Muppets in space or Muppets from space, right? And then we have like the rebooted thing of uh, the Muppets. Muppets most wanted. And uh, Muppet Treasure Island. This is a really good movie. Um, it didn't get a standalone release, but so I made my own cover. Um, yeah, just very good, very good films. Can't go wrong with a bit of Kermit, can you? Hey, 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 hey. Um, music and lyrics. This was what was the other one? Uh, this is the better version of it, was another one as well. Um, I forget what the other one was, but it's along the lines of the same story. Uh, with Drew Barrymore. Um, this is Hugh Grant. He's a washed up 80s singer, but he does write songs for other people. Um, just looking at the pictures there. Uh, yeah, he's like a washed up 80s, and he writes songs for other people. And he has to write a song for this like upcoming pop sensation. And he, he's like drawn a blank. Um, but Drew Barrymore helps him out. She, he's, she's like a, the plant waterer for some reason, or the, like the cleaner or something in his apartment. Anyway, they strike up a relationship. Her sister in it is in love with him. You know, she's like, it was like, it'd be like meeting your idol. <clears throat> and she's played brilliantly. I forget who the actress is who plays her. But she always plays like a, a secondary role. She was in 30, uh, Third Rock from the Sun. She was the um, second in command. Uh, Brad, Car uh, Brad, Brad Garrett is in this as well as his manager. He was um, Ray Romano's brother in Everlas Raymond. Just a really good rom-com funny film. Very, very good. Music and lyrics. What was the other one? There's another one. But it's a, and it's... Um, the other one is... About writing. It's, it's very similar. It's got a big gash in this case. We've gone down with a knife. Um, Murder in the First. This is quite... A hard watch, um, if I remember. Is this what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking, I think I'll never film. But there you go. That's Murder in the First. Christian Slater, Kevin Bacon, Gary Oldman. Can't remember if it's the one I'm thinking of, so I won't tell you the plot in case it's not, <laughs> not that one. Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, yeah, this is part of that one with the mirror cracked. Death on the Nile. And what is the other one? <laughs> I keep forgetting the fourth one. Came as a, like, uh, not as a set individual, but all released at the same time. Um, great film. But it's one of those, if you know the ending, you could, you know, well, it's the same of any film, really. If you know the ending, you know the ending. Very good ending. You don't really, I don't think you're going to see the ending coming. That, that was from 1974, part of the Studio Canal sort of label. They put the date on the top. <laughs> Collect them as a series. And the remake, the remake is beautiful. You've got Kenneth Brannan with that big mustache. Um, Hookie Parrell, uh, you is played by Kenneth Brannan. Um, Penelope Cruz, William Defoe. I didn't mind in this film. 
Judy Dench, Johnny Depp, Josh Gad, who played uh, the snowman thing in Frozen, um, Michelle Pfeiffer, Daisy uh, Ridley from Star Wars. It's a really good remake of that. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought the cinematography in this was beautiful and thoroughly enjoyable. Highly recommend that one. Uh, Mutant Chronicles. Is this the one with Ron Perlman? That is it. Now, these two films got released on the uh, premium collection uh, in HMV together. Uh, number 70 and number 71. Both Mutiny on the Bounty. Uh, on the bounty. Uh, you've got the Marlon Brando one there and the Charles Norton one there. There is another one, I think, with Mel Gibson, I was told. Which I think has a release in Australia now, I think, or America. My best friend's girl. Um seen this but for the love of me I can't remember a lot about it is that Dean Kane in this Dean Kane I was just saying Dean oh Dean Cook on well, good luck Chuck my best friend's wedding I think this was at one point the highest grossing uh, rom-com at one point my blueberry nights I actually walked out the cinema when I first saw this I thought it was absolutely trash but I've seen it since and I didn't mind it Natalie Portman's in this Rachel Weiss, um, Norwood Jones, the singer, and Jude Law. Didn't mind it the second time round. I'll give it another go. My beautiful, oh sorry, uh, my blue heaven. Um, Steve Martin, Rick Moranis. There was a film the other day. Someone said I had Rick Moranis in. I can't remember. I just got to look at his biography, uh, biopic thing on the IMBD. My blue heaven. That's an American import. My Cousin Rachel, I've not even opened this one yet, look at that. Uh, My Cousin Rachel with Rachel Weiss. I don't know if she plays Rachel, who knows? I don't do that. Get that plastic off there. See if there is a, it's a digital code, but I don't think you'll be able to pick it up on there. I'll put it there, but it might be a bit blurry. If you get that, good luck. Uh, My Cousin Rachel. My cousin Vinny, my other cousin Vinny, yeah, um, uh, Joe Pesci, the award winning Marissa Tomei, she actually won the award for this. Um, Fred Gwynn from Pet Cemetery and other things as a judge, <laughs> he's just so good as a judge. Utes, two Utes, <laughs> and um, Ralph Macchio, that's the one from uh, Karate Kid, isn't it? Um, Joe Pesci, one of Joe Pesci's best films. And talking to Joe Pesci, where's his film, The Super? That was a good film. That should be on Blu-ray. My Fair Lady. Now, I had this as an American import. Was it UK? Just standard one. And then they said this was coming out with um, the 50th anniversary. I've got them both in there. Yeah, I've got the Italian import. That was it. Um, and the cover is inside, I don't know if you can see that, I just popped it inside and put the two discs together because nobody wanted it in my house, uh, the spare one. And so I bought this because it said this is restored in 4K from um, from 8K scans of the original 65 millimeter elements with 96K resolution. You think, my God, that's gonna be clearer than anything. And uh, it's exactly the same transfer as the Italian import. So. Then if you've got this on, you know, if you've imported it because I wanted it way before it came out in the UK, don't feel you need to rebuy it in the UK because you don't because it's just exactly the same. My Dog Skip. Um, yeah, this is a good film. Kevin Bacon comes home from war. His uh, son, Frank Muntz, has uh, a little... Mun- Munitz, or whatever his name is. Uh, him has uh, a little dog, little Jack Russell. And uh, Kevin Bacon's a bit of a harsh father. Uh, Luke Wilson's in this as well as a returning from war soldier, sort of changed personality. It's a really good film, really nice film. It's all about the boy growing up with his dog. Really nice. A little bit sad at the end, I felt a bit sorry for the dog. My Father the Hero, Catherine Heigl, when she was like 15 in this, in a little bikini. It's, I don't know, not sort of thing you should be watching really. Uh, my, father, my Father the Hero. And it's played on that because um, she makes out that Gerard Depardieu is her lover at this like a holiday resort. Where, in actual fact, it's her father. He he's not in on it. He thinks he's like, like being just normal, 
he's, he's at the piano saying, thank heaven for little girls. And like, everybody's like, oh, you dirty old git. And uh, he's singing about his daughter and everybody thinks he's singing about his like child lover. Uh, my Girl, uh, German Import, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Macaulay Culkin and Anna Comzi. It's Anna, Macaulay Culkin, this was quite a, like, um, round about Home Alone and then you had The Good Son and you had this, I, don't, I think this came out of The Good Son. And uh, it's like quite disturbing to see what happens to Macaulay Culkin in that. My Life as a courgette now it's, i believe in america this is my life as a zucchini because you call courgettes zucchinis or we call zucchinis courgettes i don't know which way who who came up with a word first i don't know but uh, my life is courgette stop animation my neighbor totoro uh such a weird film such a really odd film uh, but very good. A lot of memorable characters in this. Um, yeah. Uh, just odd. But enjoyable. Um, uh, my Neighbour, the Yamadas. Um, yeah, another studio. Oh, that's Studio Ghibli. Uh, or Ghibli. Number nine. And this is number 12. Again, when I get my own library, I should put them all as one. Thing. And I've got a plan as well to do. I'm not going to give it away because somebody comes up with, and does it first before I get my idea out. So I'm gonna, I'll leave it as there. I've got an idea when I get my own library room of how to display them. Uh, my old lady, uh, bought this because Maggie Smith, Kevin Klein's in that as well. My own private Idaho, a young Keanu Reeves and young Viva Phoenix, obviously before he passed away, obviously. He wouldn't have filmed it when he was dead. Uh, number 59 from 1991. Not sure how long after this he actually passed away. Don't know if that was his last film, so that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Mystic River. <laughs> Mystic River. Where have I got Mystic River? Yes, I have. Uh, Mystic Pizza. Oh, uh, yes. Good film. Good film. Um, she did a few like this around here. Um, can't think of the other one I'm thinking of. Is this one with Sally Fields? Julia Roberts. What's the film I'm thinking of with Sally Fields? And Julia Roberts, when one of them has an illness, I can't remember. So many films, so poor memory. My Super Ex-Girlfriend. This is a very good superhero comedy. Uma Thurman as, um, I don't mean, it's, it doesn't say on the back. She's like, just like Supergirl or something, I can't remember. But she's got an attitude. She doesn't really want to be in that position. She comes across her powers accidentally. Um, her ex boyfriend or friend played by Eddie Izzard really good he wants her to he wants to zap her power so uh, he can have a relationship with her Anna Ferris is in this as well <coughs> Luke Wilson is dating Uma Thurman he wants out of the relationship because she's like a nut job um, but he wants um, to start up a relationship with Anna Ferris's character and um, uh, Uma Thurman is a bit of a jealous type to say the least and with superpowers, that's not a good combination. Rain Wilson's in this as his like sleazy friend as well. It's just a really good film. Super ex girlfriend. My week, my week with Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, played by Michelle Williams. You've also got Emma Watson and Eddie Redmayne in that. Mystery Men, <laughs> bunch of people with questionable superpowers. You've got one who's Deadly accurate with a fork. You got one who's like is can wield a shovel really well, played by William H Macy. You got <laughs> Ben Still who just gets angry. You got a blo bloke who's invisible, but only when you're not looking at him. A guy called the Sphinx. You pull his finger at your fart and it like clear a room, like not not like clear a room because he smells and he will leave. Clear as they knock them all out. Uh, you got a superhero who's played by Greg is it Greg Kinnear, I think that's his name, and you've got um, Jeffrey Rush in this as well. It's just a really good lineup. Uh, it's an interesting take on the superheroes. Very funny. Oh, and you got the girl with the bowling ball. 
of a dead father's skull in the bowling ball. She's like deadly accurate with it. She's really the only one with a superpower, to be honest. Mystic River. This is one I was thinking of. Sean Penn, Tim Robbins, Kevin Bacon, Lawrence Fishburne, um, Marcy Gay Harden, and Laura Lindley. This is... Is this the one where they go to prison and they're abused? Or was I right the first time with murder in the first when they're abused in prison? I can't remember which way round it is. Mystic River, directed by um, Clint Eastwood. And the last of this long video, thank God you're saying, is Mysterious Island. I can see you all swiping out, finished. Um, this is a indicator release, part of a box set. And it is um, Ray Harryhausen did the effects and you've got all the extras on the back. There's a lot of extras. Double discs. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a long video, sorry about that. I will try and speed up for the rest. Ends next and I'm looking 60, 70, maybe 80. 80 ends same with the o's the s's are going to be the one i'm going to have to probably film that over like three days it's going to take forever anyway uh take care leave a comment give it a thumbs up if you would um subscribe if you've not it's free see you in the next one Bye bye